I'm Ian Thomas with Front Office Sports. I'm here with Don White, CEO and co-founder of Satisfy Labs. You guys have been on the forefront of AI and chatbot technology. How are leagues, properties, teams using this data and, and giving fans a new experience? It started with such a simple idea, uh, looking at City Field, hungry, wanted something on the menu and saw the bacon on a stick was there. So we're like, well, how could a team know the bacon on stick demand? And so what teams have kind of figured out is that now by providing a conversational search, they're able to own the dialogue with the fan and now understand their wants and needs. So it always starts out typically on the guest experience side just to help the fan get what they want. Now the transition is the marketing people are getting involved, the ticketing people are getting involved, and now it's moving heavily into a sales product as opposed to just a customer service product. Are there, you know, teams can't get enough of fan data. How are you guys helping create that line to sort of say to your point, this person wants to buy tickets, they want to know when games are or who the top players are. How is that data being transferred back to a property to make sure that they can sort of make it actionable? So the concept behind our product is it's omnichannel. So whether a fan enters through the web or through the app or through Facebook or Alexa or what have you, there's a trail of their queries, their intents we call them. We track those back to devices or if there's login data we could track it back to the actual fan. So we keep profiles that are available to the team or the venue and then show them their intents. They're looking for a designated driver, that means they're probably also looking for a beer. Or maybe they want to be a designated driver and they might not be interested in a beer. So now you're going to be able to do like smart offers and discounts in addition to just adding to your CRM what they want or how they operate. You're seeing a proliferation of devices that, that offer things like this, Alexa, like you said, phones and through Siri. I mean, how has that sort of progression of everyone kind of having a device like this aided a company like yours that plays right in this sort of space? You know, we, we'd love to say we plan it this way. We <laughs> believed that voice would be the future. There was just a statistic, like 50% of all searches are gonna be voice in two years. And you think about who's doing that. Well, it's actually not just like my kids who only talk to their device. It's actually also senior citizens, people that can't see, people that find it inconvenient to type. So you have two ends. Our company was built on an answer engine. So, hey, let's take all the knowledge and put it in one place. So when the voice products start to proliferate and then when the new Apple business chat and these products start coming out, it was right into our lane. And so we're super excited about the three of four devices coming out and new technologies coming out. Are there ways that, on what, things like a chat bot and, and these questions, is it sometimes better to keep things very simple? Is, it some, is there any you know, concern about going too advanced in terms of the way it, it works? I mean, like you said, people maybe just want to know where a food item is, not necessarily like a, a very robust conversation with, with a chat bot. It's, uh, there was a study done about search and like 50% is in the top range of natural, frequently asked questions, and then the tail is super long. So we actually always built for the tail. So on average, any of our bots knows and understands 500 unique things, sometimes up to 50,000. Fan might not discover them. So the real challenge is actually fans discovering the depth of some of the products that we create, and that's something we're actively working on to surprise and delight them. That's cool. You mentioned before there's, you guys are moving into the entertainment space as well, and broadening beyond sports to certain degrees. I mean, where do you see opportunities where you can learn something at a concert or a festival that you can bring back to sports and maybe vice versa, do, do something that works well in the stadium and bring it to the concert environment? So fascinating, I was at Bonnaroo, which is in Tennessee, middle of nowhere, and we were able to get a ton of data about what artists or types of bands people want to see. So there's the lineup, and the lineup's based on social demand in theory, but what about who's really looking for who and who's hoping who's going to be performing? So when you think about the sports, well, do we start doing more about the players they're interested in and the merch of those players as opposed to just a generic merch? Like, what kind of merch do you want? What kind of media do you want? So I think getting more, the music industry is hyper-specific and we've been building with that. Now I think there's a lot we could do more on the sports side, which will pair nicely. Where do you see the opportunities arising in the future? Is, is there e-commerce opportunities like that? Will there be better integration? Are there opportunities maybe to connect fans with digital plat other teams with digital platforms or even sponsor opportunities? Where, what are you seeing as developing spaces or, or even opportunities that might arise uh, in the future? Number one is commerce. 
So we are now launching ticketing products that sell tickets. Our number one intent was how do I buy a ticket? And we would just tell them where the will call office was or the link. Now we can, through the AI, talk to them and just sell them the ticket that they want. Same with food, same with merch. So you'll also see a lot of partnerships come out. Like you'll hear us announcing a few partnerships with a parking company so that now you can also get your parking sorted out. Certain food vendors, so now you can get your food to your seat. So I think now it's going to be a partnership game of us and other companies that are doing different things, connecting so that one platform is for the venue or for the team, and they don't have to go searching for five or six vendors. You have a lot, number of stadiums that are under construction or being renovated at this point in time. You know, we were talking obviously about this technology being used on a mobile device or what someone has in their pocket. Are there opportunities in stadium for you guys to, to present, you know, have kiosks or touch points or especially as, as stadiums become more digital and, and have different engagement ways to be more integrated into the physical building as well? Yes, there's actually one project working on. It's a POC that's still in scoping, but it's a hologram. And that hologram would have the ability to converse. It's a partner company that we work with, uh, Ventana. And so they have a hologram. We can do the AI behind the hologram. Now you have a three-dimensional physical interaction, engagement. And then the AI is on the knowledge side. That's just one example. Kiosk is another good example. And, and there's also some people that want to do something like uh, when you walk into the stadium, your app could pop up and give you a more proactive, like, hi, I'm here to help you. What can you do? So I think you'll see the integration happen rapidly as the new ones are built. You know, I guess just to wrap up, like you said, there's some hologram integration potentials. There's different ways the technology can be improved. Not to give you a crystal ball, but where do you see things evolving? Are there, are there new elements of technology that you think could be integrated into chatbot and AR con AI conversations? Where are you looking next for that next new thing? Well, the biggest, I think, asset that we can bring is we're trying to merge them. So I mentioned products like Google and Siri, and so all those engines are going to be able to tap into the knowledge we're creating very soon. So it's going to be a consolidation of access points, and then the competition is going to be around, well, what more can I do with this conversation? So now that I've talked to you about your tickets, well, I can maybe sell you your ticket, I could dispatch someone to walk you to your seat, I could then have your order ready when you get there. So we could start to build more convenient trails of things. Right now they're all kind of separated, broken out, but we haven't really created the one thing that can take care of all facets of it for you in one single experience. That's the missing link.